What if the world glitches under pressure, literally, from mysterious radio signals that seem to serve no purpose to, to machines that stop acting random when the whole world feels something, to invisible forces warping your brain just before an earthquake? These are bizarre events that prove the world is a simulation. The tectonic strain theory suggests that before an earthquake, stress builds up in the Earth's crust and releases low frequency electromagnetic waves. And there's this idea that these EM waves can interfere with the human nervous system, causing hallucinations, nausea, and feelings of dread. In some places, people report glowing lights in the sky or buzzing sounds, ghost-like visions, often just days or even hours before a quake. This becomes especially interesting when you look at reports of paranormal activity clustered along fault lines. The idea is that what people interpret as a supernatural thing might actually be a side effect of EM energy hitting their brains in just the right way. Researchers like Michael Persinger have tried to replicate these effects in a lab using electromagnetic stimulation to induce hallucinations and feelings of a presence in volunteers. But how does this connect to reality being a simulation? Well, if our brains can be manipulated this easily, it does raise the question, how stable is our perception of reality at all? If tectonic strain can change what we see or feel, then reality might be less solid than we think and more like code reacting to pressure. There's a group of scientists who've been running a weird experiment for years. They set up a bunch of machines all over the world called random number generators, basically devices that spit out completely random strings of numbers. But during major world events like terror attacks or big natural disasters, they found that patterns tend to show up in the number generators. They start acting less random. Now, is this just a coincidence or, in theory, could our collective emotions somehow be influencing the numbers? Statistically, this shouldn't happen, but it keeps happening. Enough that it's made a bunch of researchers seriously wonder if human consciousness could have an effect on physical systems. So what does this mean? Well, if the world around us really is a simulation, this phenomenon could make sense. Often in games or programs, when too many users interact at once, the system can glitch or lag. Maybe when billions of people are emotionally focused on the same thing, it's messing with the simulation's background processes. Reality itself could start to wobble a little, and those numbers that are supposed to be randomly spat out could start showing patterns. There's this shortwave radio signal people have been hearing on and off since the late 90s. Nobody knows where it's coming from and it doesn't send voices, numbers, or anything you can actually decode. It just plays weird distorted tones that sound almost like music in reverse or like someone messing with a cassette tape. Take a listen. This is why people started calling it the backwards music station. It doesn't have a schedule, a name, or any kind of pattern. It'll just suddenly start broadcasting for hours, then vanish again. What's strange is that it shows up on frequencies close to those old numbers stations from the Cold War, the ones spies used to get coded instructions. But this one doesn't seem to be trying to say anything. There's no rhythm, no breaks, no ID. Some radio hobbyists think it might be some kind of military tech bleeding through, like signals meant for submarines or secret communication systems. Others think it could be a data signal, but in a format that nobody recognizes. But if the world really is a simulation, maybe it's not meant for anyone at all. Maybe it's part of the system itself, some leftover noise leaking into our reality. So here's something NASA still can't explain. When certain spacecraft fly past Earth to gain speed, what's called a gravity assist, they sometimes come out of the maneuver going just a little bit faster or slower than expected. Not by much, just a few millimeters per second, but in space, that's a big deal. And nobody knows why it happens. But it's happened to multiple probes over the years. Galileo, Near, Rosetta, and others. The math is solid going in, but after the flyby, they check the data and they're like, what? That, that shouldn't have happened. Even after ruling out stuff like equipment error. Now in a simulated world, this makes a strange kind of sense. Maybe the flyby is forcing the physics engine to recalculate on the fly and it doesn't always do it perfectly. Like a video game that lags when a player moves too fast past a boundary. The laws stay consistent until something brushes up against the edge 
of the system. Sometimes people dream about places they've never been, only to later stumble across them in real life. This sounds kind of made up, but one of the most widely discussed cases comes from a man named Chris Robinson, sometimes referred to as the dream detective. He claims to have had precognitive dreams that helped him find real world locations, ones he'd never visited in real life before. In one case, he dreamed about a strange courtyard with archways, a fountain, and specific stonework. Later, while traveling in Italy, he walked into a courtyard that perfectly matched his dream, down to the placement of objects. He insists He'd never seen it before, not even in a photo or a movie. Of course, there are plenty of skeptics and possible logical explanations, but it is interesting. I mean, so many of us have had experiences like this, specific things happening in dreams that eerily play out in real life. Are we just pulling from subconscious memories, or are we tapping into something deeper, like data bleeding from one layer of a simulation into another? The Double Slit Experiment. This one's famous for a reason. It messes with the very idea of reality. Here's my attempt to explain it. So you fire tiny particles like electrons or photons at a barrier with two slits and then watch what hits the wall behind it. If you don't measure which slit the particles go through, it behaves like a wave interfering with itself, creating this striped pattern like ripples in water. But the second you observe it, even passively, it snaps back to behaving like a solid particle, and the interference pattern vanishes. To put it simply, when you watch what happens, it changes the outcome. That shouldn't really happen. Nothing in normal physics says a particle should care or behave any differently just because it's being watched. But yet, somehow, this happens. In a simulated world though, this is exactly what you'd expect. Think about how video games work. The game doesn't fully render areas the player isn't looking at. It saves processing power. Now, imagine reality does the same thing. Until something is observed, it stays in a kind of maybe state. But once you look, the simulation decides what it should be. There's a theory called biocentrism, and it flips everything we thought we knew about reality on its head. Instead of life being a byproduct of the universe, it says that the universe exists because of life. In other words, without consciousness, there's no reality. It sounds like stoner philosophy, but this was actually proposed by scientist Dr. Robert Lanza. And when you look at how quantum physics behaves, it kind of makes sense. This kind of connects to the double slit experiment that we just talked about. The second you measure or observe a particle, it changes just by looking at it. Biocentrism says our consciousness isn't stuck in the universe, it's actually shaping it. Like your awareness is writing the code as you go. If that's true, then maybe everything you see around you, time, space, matter, it only exists because you're here to witness it. As if the simulation doesn't run until a player logs in. Let's talk about the smallest thing in the universe, like the absolute tiniest. It's called the planet length, about a hundred millionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a centimeter. So small, it's basically nothing. According to physics, you can't look any smaller than this. Try to zoom in past it and the math just breaks. Reality gets fuzzy. Like a pixelated image that you just zoomed too far in. Now ask yourself, why would reality need to have a smallest possible unit at all? If the universe was truly infinite, there'd be no reason for this lower limit. But if it's running on some kind of engine, if this is all just a simulation, then there has to be a smallest building block. You can't render infinity. Things like the speed of light, gravity, and Planck's constant all tie into this. Just like how game developers limit how far you can zoom in or how fast you can move to keep the whole thing from falling apart. So if there's a smallest pixel of space and time, could it mean that we're inside something artificial? If you take a step back and really look at the world, it becomes obvious something weird is going on with the math. Patterns are everywhere. Spiral galaxies, sunflowers, hurricane formations, seashells. All of them follow the Fibonacci sequence, a series of numbers that pop up again and again in nature. The golden ratio shows up in everything from the shape of your face to the structure of galaxies. Then there's fractals, patterns that repeat themselves no matter how far you zoom in or out. Trees, rivers, lightning, lungs, all following mathematical blueprints. Nature 
is ruled by math. And that's kind of strange because if the universe is random and chaotic, why does it keep producing neat, repeating formulas? If everything works like code, maybe it's because it is code. Video games, everything from movement to rendering to environment is built on math. Maybe the real world is no different. What we're seeing as natural beauty could just be the visual expression code. Time isn't as solid as you think. In fact, it bends. That's what Einstein's theory of relativity says, and we've proven it. If you go fast enough or sit in a strong enough gravitational field, time literally ticks slower for you. This isn't science fiction. Astronauts living on the International Space Station age slightly slower than we do here on Earth. GPS satellites wouldn't even work if they didn't account for time dilation, so time moves differently depending on where you are and how fast you're going. Almost like the system is prioritizing certain areas over others. Sound familiar? It should. A game engine puts most of its power into rendering what's right in front of the player. The stuff in the distance, lower quality, slower loading. Maybe not even there until you get closer. Could our universe be doing the same thing? Maybe reality runs faster in some places and slows down in others to save on processing. With all that said though, I've been your host James and I'll catch you, yes you specifically, in the next video. Mm -hmm.